And he says, Lord, you are my answer. A, with the capital A. You're my protector. You're my rock. You are my answer. Whatever the question might be, Lord, you are the answer. Sometimes we're not even sure what the question is. We don't know how to put it into words. But God is our answer. It's not just that he has the answer, as if he is more intelligent, more far-seeing than us. Certainly that's true. But God himself is the answer. And David realizes this. My protector, my rock, my answer. Listen to this entire section that follows in which he says, I call upon the Lord. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. And to my God, I cried for help. Have you been in that place where in some distress you called out to the Lord? Maybe it wasn't a, a pretty prayer. Maybe it wasn't in great eloquence. But it didn't matter. Like a gracious father, God hears the cry. David said, in my distress, I cried out. He doesn't say he composed a beautiful song. I simply cried out to God in my distress. And listen to what he says. From his temple, he heard me. My cry reached his ears. And listen to what follows. We won't read all of it, but there is a long section in which he details God's response. God is moved. He said, the earth reels, the mountains trembled and quakes. God is moving. He bowed the heavens. He came down. This is an answer to David's cry of distress. He rode on the chair, rode on the wings of the wind. Out of the brightness, he broke through. God thundered in the heavens. He spoke. He flashed lightnings. And he came to my aid. The whole section climaxes in this. He says, he reached down from on high and he took me. He reached down from on high and he took me. All of this, David is saying, God is my answer. He hears my cry of distress and it doesn't fall on deaf ears. God moves. And when God moves, everything happens. He reached down from on high and he took me. He drew me out of the mighty waters. He delivered me. That's how God responds to his beloved as they cry out in distress and call upon him. God is our protector. God is our rock upon which to stand. God is our answer. And he hears our cry of distress and need. And as he was for David, so he is for us. I. God is our illuminator. God brings clarity and light. And there's something pure and beautiful about lighting up a dark space, bringing light to something, to someone. Listen to what David said. It is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. And then he reiterates so many of these things again and again and again. He is my shield and my refuge. The themes are interwoven throughout the song. God, my protector, my rock, my answer, my illuminator. How often we need clarity. We need light. We need God's way of seeing, don't we? And David said, I find this in God. He brings clarity to my confusion. It's as if he is light shining in the darkness. Not just a small light, but the, the dawning of a sun that sends shadows fleeing and light travels everywhere. And isn't that true? As we find our light and our clarity in God, it reaches out and extends to everything in our lives, every aspect of our lives, every struggle, every difficulty. It's not so much that they always go away, but somehow we know our path. Somehow we are renewed and we take confidence for the light and the shadows are gone and there is light. God, my illuminator. And then he 
says, God, you are my strength. He said it at the beginning. He says it at the end. And he says it many times in between. God, I have found in you my strength. In fact, the opening words of the psalm begin with that. I love you, my Lord, my strength. Perhaps more than anything else, David came again and again and again to God when he was downcast, when he was in a terrible situation, when he found himself against impossible odds, when he had lost all strength in the face of those things. And like David, we know how draining life can be. Sometimes to make the same attempt again and again. To come up wanting in our efforts. But he said, God, you are my strength. It's not that you just give strength, but you come and your presence with me is my strength. You are my strength. You give me an inner power and a hope that somehow enables me to go on. You're my protector, my rock, my answer, my illuminator, my strength. And then in a beautiful way, at the end of the song, at the end of the song, he says, Lord, you are my exalter. You're the one who exalts me, who lifts me up. What a beautiful image. A God who lifts us up. It's a beautiful bit of irony, and in fact, David says this in his praise, his celebration. He says, God, you are the one who is exalted. You deserve to be exalted, for you live. You are the God of my salvation. I will exalt you. But he says, indeed, you have exalted me against my enemies. You have exalted me. You're the one that should be lifted up and exalted. I don't deserve it. But yet you have cared for me and exalted me. You lift me up. What a beautiful picture of God who lifts us up. But this is not just a, a psalm of David. It's not just an opportunity for David to praise God as an anointed king, though he was, as God's chosen, though he was. John Calvin said he saw in this psalm a, a beautiful picture of Christ, of Jesus, who is our protector, our shield, our rock, the rock of ages, our answer, the one who brings light and clarity, our illuminator, our strength, our exalter, the one who is made low that we might be lifted up. And so we, like David, have even more reason to praise God, who is all of these things at once. And perhaps that only becomes clear as we look back on some situation, some season of time, or maybe a lifetime. But then as we look forward, we move forward knowing that God is all of these things at once to us and even more in Christ our Lord. Because he is protector, rock, answer, illuminator, strength, exalter, and perhaps many other things as well. We, like David, have reason, more reason, to praise, for we are God's anointed, God's chosen in Christ. We have been the object of his affections, of his love. We have been the ones whom God has called to himself in steadfast love, now and forever. And so with David, we are right to praise this God and to call out to him in these variety of ways, whatever our needs might be today. Knowing all of this, maybe it's time for you and I to follow in David's footsteps. And when things look bleak, when things look difficult, when we have reached the end, when our strength is exhausted, to say with David, I call upon you, Lord. I call upon you. You are my everything. In my distress, 
I will call upon you. I will cry for help. So one and all, maybe it's time for us to follow in David's footsteps and put a call there to this God.